is you, you got to stop rescuing. You got to stop, as as we say in the church, padding their pew, making it comfortable for them to continue in the same behavior uh, and, and continue to use. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. And Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources to help you identify those around you that may be struggling with life debilitating addictions. We are a Christ-based organization that works with addicts every day. Brother A, last couple of podcasts, we've gone over the tough love and we're gonna continue kind of on that theme of tough love. And tell us a little bit of the aspect that we're gonna be diving into today. Yeah, so, you know, we have been uh, having a pretty robust discussion about tough love and what that is and what it's not really. Uh, but we, we wanna continue with that theme, but kind of piggybacking off of it and talk about how loved ones, how friends, people who care about the recovering addict, addict can appropriately support them uh, in their recovery and even if they re if they relapse. Okay. Uh, and so you know, so many times, and this is one of the things I've said uh, for so many years in in Teen Challenge, particularly when you from a recovery standpoint, uh, oftentimes help ain't help. Okay. I know that ain't great grammar. Right. You know, but uh, sometimes what we're looking at and we think or believe is help and it is not help. OK. And because, explain that. Explain ex that. Explain. I'm a, I'll explain that in this context. OK. You know, you you may think you're doing something good that's not really helpful. OK. You know, so, you know, for example, uh, a, 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 a parent or a spouse who has a loved one uh, battling addiction that consistently is getting getting themselves in uh, unhealthy situations okay for example uh, getting arrested right and they immediately go and bail them out okay that's not necessarily helping them okay why why because uh, the, the the what's the point of consequences? The point of consequences is to cause the individual to look at the behavior and want to change. So if 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 you are consistently uh, blocking them or rescuing rescuing them from the consequences, right? Why do they need to change? Right, they're not going to understand. If I do this, I get in trouble. Mommy or daddy's going to come rescue me. I'll exactly. be okay. And exactly. So, but yeah, there's got to be that time that. You know, you got to face the music. You got to right. lie in your bed that you made. And right. you just got to realize, hey, you know, I did this to myself and now I need to face and own up to what I've done wrong. Right. Well, you know, and that's the whole point of consequence. They're supposed to motivate you to want change, to want right. to do something different. But if I have somebody that's always going to rescue me, I don't see a need to do anything different. Right. Because I know that they're going to rescue me. Yeah. And so if we even look at that whole idea of uh, tough love, tough love is being able to say, hey, I love you, but I'm not bailing you out. Right. Right. And that is and it's and the reason why it's tough love is it's not necessarily always tough on the individual that did the wrong. It's a lot of times it's really tough on the parent, too. Oh, it's absolutely or, or the person is. that it absolutely th is. the loved one. That's so. a good perspective to look at it as it's tough for me to have to do this. It's tough on me doing this because I love you. I want to come and bail you out, but I know I can't. I know it's not helping you. I know it's not the right thing in this situation to right. do to help you. You know, but you know, when you, when you look at uh, the loved one or the parent who is constantly rescuing the individual and preventing them from having to deal with the consequences of their actions, uh, oftentimes the loved one doesn't realize that they are they have become a part of the problem. As we talked about right. in the previ previous previous uh, podcast, they, they've become a part of the problem, not a part of the solution. Right. And so the objective should always be, if you love someone, is to become a part of the solution. Right. Right. And if you need somebody to help with this please give us a call. You can give us a call here at Teen Challenge at 833-462-8286 or you can visit us online at 
atctn.org. You can click on that tab right there on the front page that says get help now. So click on that and go ahead and fill that out and we will help you with that. Or you can also send us an email at missiondriven at atctn.org. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so another another uh, aspect we need to kind of uh, explore as we as we discuss this is why do parents or why do uh, 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 people who love the recovering addict uh, seem to think that they're helping by rescuing them? Uh, oftentimes you, you, you're dealing with uh, parents or loved ones that in some way feels a sense of response, feels somehow responsible for what's happening in the individual's life. Right. Even though uh, they're not. Yeah. They feel responsible. Obviously the individual is making their own choices. Um, but they, 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 I've talked to a number of parents, you know, uh, about their son or loved one who's, who's, you know, caught up in the throes of addiction and they're just broken about it and wanting to say, and, and, and they, they, they will literally ask me the question, what did I do wrong? Right. And that's what I was just thinking of too. Or, or what, what didn't I do? Right. And I often will say to the, that, that, that wife or that, uh, parent you're not responsible for the choices that they're making. You, you did the best that you could do as a parent. You did the best that you could do as a spouse, you know, because the reality is we don't know what we don't know. So, you know, if there was some void in their life that, that uh, the parent or the, the spouse wasn't feeling uh, and the, they don't know it, you know, they're not responsible be, for the choices that the individual is making because they feel a sense of void. Yeah. Now, a lot of times, do you think when parents bail, bail them out and kind of, I think kind of goes with that, that they're trying to fix maybe what they think they've done wrong? Yeah. Well, part of it, you're, you're right, is, is part of it is, is if, if I don't rescue them too, and something really horrible happens to them, then I have to live with that. Right. So I'm rescuing them um, because I don't want it to be on my conscious conscience or or on, on my shoulders if something really bad happens to them. And and I often will say to the parent, if you keep doing what you're doing, something's going to happen right. to them that 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 you don't want to happen. Um, they have to be forced into a place to where they take ownership of their own life. Right. Um, it, it can't be the loved one or uh, 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 the person trying to help. You know, here's one of the things I tell the staff often at Adult and Teen Challenge. We can't want it more for them than they want it for themselves. Right. Right. And they have mm-hmm. to want it. I mean, you can, like the saying says, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Right. And they have to come to that point. They have to come to those, see those consequences, and they have to come to the point right. where they are going to need that help and they want that right. help. So, with that being said, the the loved one that has a one that's with addiction or relapsing, what's the best way for them to show tough love? What would you give an example of that? Well, the, 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 to start with, what we've been having a discussion about is is you, you got to stop rescuing them. You got to stop, as as we say in the church, patting their pew, making it comfortable for them to continue in the same behavior uh, and and continue to use. You have to decide that I'm no longer going to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. I, 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 I can't get them high anymore. Right. I can't get them drunk anymore. Right. I can't. Uh, make excuses for them anymore right you know because oftentimes the uh, recovering addict or addict the person definitely in an active addiction will will deflect uh, why they're doing what they're doing to things that happen to them or things that they use that as a way to manipulate uh, parents or a loved one and say if you would have done this or that or if you wouldn't have done this (laughs) I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Right. Still trying to push that responsibility of their actions onto somebody else. It's it's your fault that I'm like this. Exactly. And refusing to take ownership of their own life, to take 
respond. That's why, you know, when you're talking about the recovering addict, the first the first step to being able to 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 have a healthy recovery uh, program is to be honest. Yeah. To be honest with yourself. Right. To stop deflecting the blame to everyone else for uh, uh, for your condition. Yeah. Put your big boy pants on, put your big girl pants on and admit, you know, this is actually my fault. I I'm the one that did this to myself. Nobody else has done it. Nobody made me do this. I did this. Yeah, and you know, and the fact is even if there was a there was something that happened in your life that triggered uh, uh, you to use drugs or alcohol and you end up in this condition, you've continued to do it afterwards. Yeah. So you, you still have not uh, at any point sought real help in it so that you can begin to make better decisions about your life and your, your future so that you don't continue that behavior. Um, and, and so, at, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, you have nobody else to blame but yourself. You know, uh, you know, matter of fact, there's a from a uh, biblical standpoint, that is a uh, concept that I don't know that many Christians get or, or, and people in general get when it comes to the fall of man, okay. where 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 Adam and Eve disobey God. Well, you know, a lot of people have this idea of why are we having to pay for their disobedience? Right. Well, the reality is if the only way you can say you were paying for their disobedience is if you didn't sin after them right but you you've continued we've continued yeah, we all have yeah to fail god even after them yeah so it's no longer about their failure now it's about our failure it's about our failure that's right and we have to take responsibility for our own failure right and at the point where we're willing to take ownership for our life and uh the things that we 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 have done to cause our life to be in the state that it's in, that's the point that we can begin to really recover it and see restoration take place in our life. There's a, there's a scripture in, in Galatians uh, chapter 6, verse 1, that, that says, Brother, and if you find a brother in a fault, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in a, 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 in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you fall. What I love, first of all, about that verse is that it it, 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 it it encompasses all of us. Right. Uh, it's not saying, hey, you who are better than them, you go and restore them. Right. But it's saying, you know, in your attempt to help them change their life, you realize that that could be you. Right. So you re, you, you're doing this out of a place of humility, uh, out of a place of meekness uh, to try to help this individual be restored. But oftentimes again how people are trying to help somebody be restored is not helping them right so those that are out there that have a loved one that's struggling with addictions and uh, maybe going through relapse and everything and they keep ending up in trouble and you continue to rescue them stop it show them that tough love love them by helping them by not seeing them. the consequences of their actions let them get to that point where they need and they realize that they need to get that help be there for them to give them get them that help and you can do that through here through teen challenge or another program but help them find that program don't rescue them but help them lead them to where they need help to help them help themselves that's right that's right and you can always give us a call here at atctn at 833-462-8286 or go to our website at atctn.org and click up on that get help now tab uh, really is important for you to show that type of love to help them get that help don't rescue them but help them get that help and help them like brother a just say help them help themselves so i want to thank you for joining us today on mission driven and like i said if you want to Reach out in any of those ways through our phone number, 833-462-8286, or on the web at atctn.org. Would really appreciate it. And thank you for watching, and we will see you next time right here on Mission Driven. Mission Driven.